The open road, endless possibilities, living on a whim. You know, some people look and wonder, why waste your life away on the back of a bike? They need to get the stick out of their ass and remember what it's like to have some fun. I mean, guys like you sit there, eight hours a day, every day, in your little suit and tie, some corporate bitch, and pass judgment on us? You don't know what it's like to be alive. We're free. I've only got three rules to worry about. Don't be a rat, don't rape women, and don't kill anyone without a reason. The rest is fair game, man. It's all about a good time and that sweet, sweet black top. And let me tell you, there's nothing better than the smell of fumes mixing with hot asphalt, the wind beating against your face, and the hum of that engine underneath you. That is, being almost completely deaf, to me, it's more the low rumbling vibrations, the hammering of that muscle, the feeling of torque as you grip the throttle. The name's Deacon. What do I do for a living? I think we had a misunderstanding. I do whatever the hell I want. Typically, we cruise around until we hit a bar, party a couple nights, and then fuck off. What do you mean? Not many people tell us no. Listen, you're gonna have to look at me when you talk to me. I read lips. It's fine, just don't make me repeat myself. Uh, how long we stay depends. One time we threw a rager for the record books. Lasted five, maybe six days. But the last shithole we pulled over at, a couple of townsfolks didn't like having us around. A little disagreement broke out. Only stayed about two hours, so, like I said, depends. Robbery? Nah, that wasn't us. I don't know what you're talking about. Look man, everything's illegal. Now do you want to hear what I fucking saw or not? Okay, so we were on a run cruising next to the east coast. We were somewhere real scenic and shit. Lots of nature. The road wasn't as straight as we're used to, you know, weaving between hills and trees. Gotta say, it felt like a nice change of pace from the desert. That is, until that fucking thing ran out of nowhere. It's funny how much presence of mind you have during an accident. Split second and it's over, but during that short window, it's like you make decisions in slow motion. There was no time to swerve. Was definitely gonna hit it. So I slammed on the brakes as hard as I could. I'm talking white knuckle ham fisting the fucking lever. My front plates had less wear than the back, so my bike started lifting up off its ass. Popping a wheelie. That point you know you lost control. I put my hands in front of my face and braced myself for impact. But just as I'm about to slam into that dumb animal, I notice its skin. A rotting green color. Peeling off the muscle in spots. It's physique was distorted with growths, jagged from protruding bones and, and covered in what looked like barnacles. Then I went flying. All this in probably four, maybe five seconds? Trippy shit, man. I'd love to live on that time. Short while later, I woke up in the breakdown lane. The gang cheered. They were standing over me like I'm the second coming. You'd think they'd take me to a hospital, but nah, too much liability. I'm sure I've got a warrant out somewhere. They told me when I hit the thing, I did a cartwheel mid-air with my bike. Some circus ole shit. Luckily, I landed in a bush and the cycle cleared over me. Somehow, got away with only a couple scratches and bruises. Can't say the same for my bike. It was totaled. Like losing a child, man. What a fucking miracle though, right? The gang left the prospect and me on the side of the road while they drove into the nearby town looking for a burner I could ride. What? You don't drive bitch as a biker, even the recruit knows that. I swear we need a fucking hang around with a 4x4, but whatever. So they left us behind, we were just chilling, waiting, killing time, 
weather wasn't bad, the salty breeze felt refreshing, a real fucking vacation. We figured all that's missing is some tunes, you feeling me? When the prospect flipped the radio on on his bike, everything instantly felt less... nice. Some... something, man. The wind shifted, the temperature changed, a single gray cloud cast some shade over us. I can't explain exactly what, but something immediately felt off. That's when for the first time since I lost my sense of sound all those years ago, I heard something. Like white noise, but it was wet. I use the term heard lightly because it was more like it broadcasted inside my head. The same way your thoughts do, but louder, drowning everything out. The timbre of it was velvety, tickling your eardrums. In the distance, a faint wailing melody rang along with it. But it wasn't playing from the radio. This sounded like this sounded like it came from the sea. Like a siren's call. I got chills, man, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it, see? I shouted at the prospect to turn it off, but he just stood there. Swaying around, his hands stuck to the dial. So I got up to switch it off myself. But as I got close, he lost it, charging at me like an animal, tackling me to the ground. And then he just started fucking laying into me, punch after punch. His eyes wide, frantic, bloodshot. Words were useless, nothing was getting through. Flashes of white blinked with each impact. I thought I was gonna die. Toys in one day, am I right? They say bad shit comes in threes. I managed to tuck my legs under him and sprain the bastard off. He stumbled backwards before regaining composure, then the motherfucker pulled a switchblade on me. He paused for a moment, real crazy like, like a tweaker, and charged at me. I was in arm's reach of the shotgun strapped to his bike. Good thing he keeps it loaded. I really didn't want to get stabbed again. Knocked him down like a carnival game. Almost popped out of his shoes. But didn't kill him. Poor bastard laid on the ground convulsing, spitting up blood. His muscles strained to get him up, but at that close range, they were shredded to hell. He wasn't going anywhere. The fucked up part. He didn't stop moving until I turned the radio off. I didn't know what the hell was happening, but I knew I had to find the others. I dragged the body out of sight for the time being, took the prospect's bike, and followed the road down. The peacefulness of the small fisherman city clashed heavily against all the events leading up to now. Newburyport, read the sign. Sounded like a tourist trap, but this place was a ghost town. Its affluent aesthetics felt eerie with the empty streets. Thankfully, it's not hard to find where a dozen bikers stopped. Of course, it was a bar, Jim Pesto's Bar and Grill. All the bikes were there, a couple across the street at the burger joint, but both were empty. You don't just leave your ride behind and go off somewhere. So where the hell is everybody? The silence was so loud, a deaf guy could hear it. No pun intended. Something felt off. Just like before on the side of the road when the prospect flipped the radio on. That's when the sound started buzzing in my head again pushing all the thoughts out. It was coming from inside the bar. So I crept forward, loading my gun with the little focus I could summon, fighting off a trance. Towards the back of the joint, by the restrooms, I could see a fleshy mold covering the floors and walls. It smelled like the ocean. It pulsated with a steady rhythm that mimicked my breath. Fuck you, I don't care if you believe me. The shit was everywhere. The slimy meat globbed down, slowly creeping and expanding. One of the doors of the bathroom was barred shut with a pipe from the outside. And as I got closer, it started violently shaking on its hinges. I'm telling you, I wasn't ready for this horror shit, man. Whatever was in there had a pair of vocal cords I could feel in my bones. Low, guttural noises that shook the floor and the vibrations crawled up my legs. Whatever it was. It was pissed. But how bad could it be? I had a pretty big boomstick. I inched up forward, approaching the door. Swing it open, fire. Swing it open, fire, I kept repeating. Could fire through the door, but curiosity is like your old lady. It'll make you do things you don't want. 
I stood before the jammed handle. The door was dancing like crazy. The pipe holding it all together. I reached with my left hand to unlock it and... Someone put their hand on my shoulder. I turned to see crazy old Dave. Scared me so bad I shot the fucking ceiling. Don't open the door, his lips said. When the dust settled, I saw thin strands of red seeping from each of his ears. Crazy bastard gouged his fucking hearing out. It's the radio, it's the radio, he kept mouthing over and over. I told him to get out of there and asked where the hell everybody was. He pointed me towards the lighthouse as he hightailed it out of there. I made my way towards that damn lighthouse. Along the shore were dozens of shipwrecks. Frights, tugs, even commercial tour crafts. I'm talking lines of beached boats stood scattered around like gravestones. And there was nobody around, not a soul. The metal husks stood there, lifeless, foreboding. Storm clouds began to gather, their rolling thunder shaking my bones. Again, it was like something out of a movie, man. I stood before the tower. The sea grew angry, crashing against it. Part of me wanted to run, but I'm not one to back off, so I kicked the lighthouse door in and barged up the stairs, caution to the wind. As I climbed upwards, radio equipment started lining the walls, cabinets with knobs, flashing buttons, antennas, cabling, real technical shit. At the very top in the room with the beacon set a skinny paling man in front of a large council. His skin was a greenish hue, covered in barnacles like a deer. I raised my shotgun to my shoulder and he stood from his chair and faced me. His physical demeanor seemed jagged, hunched over, no longer human. We met eyes, his were ashy yellow, they bulged out of his skull. He tried to speak but his mouth curved around his head, the gap unnaturally long hanging open from ear to ear. Around his neck, several slits their flesh protruding outward with each breath like gills. It was fucking nauseating. The air smelled like ocean rot. In his arms, he clutched a mysterious object, some sort of golden sphere. I told him to put it down, but that just made him panic. In one swift motion, he jumped at me, tossing the ball over my head and out the window. The sudden movement caused me to fire. Point blank deader than a doorstop. I glanced outside to try to spot the thing he chucked, but it was useless. It went straight into the sea. Here's where it gets really fucked. As I gazed through the window, along the beach I saw people. Hundreds of people. Some of them, my friends. They stood mesmerized, looking towards the horizon. Then one by one, they began marching into the water. No hesitation, no second thoughts. In a couple minutes, they were all gone. I booked it out of there faster than a fucking jackrabbit. Before I left, I wrecked all the equipment in that lighthouse and took what looks like to be the mysterious man's journal. It seems that the guy I shot in the lighthouse was a radio pirate. He had a station with some less than favorable political content. He was eluding the FCC for years by running his operation from a small houseboat. Here, I, I have it with me. No, you can't fucking have it. It's the only proof that... That... Just, just listen to these two entries. March 24th, 2002. Full moon tonight. Had to move the boat to a new location. The Coast Guard is making it difficult to continue broadcasting. Of note... As I was idling about 40 clicks off Newberry's port, on the surface of the water I saw a bright glowing orb. Upon closer inspection, it was neither a buoy nor a fender, but some sort of rock, oddly resembling the color and shape of the moon that night. It was very heavy, but didn't sink. I fished it on board with a net, but upon touching it I heard a strange sound. It came from nowhere, but engulfed all the other noises. It didn't play a melody, yet its tune was addicting. 
The longer I laid my hands on it, the less I wanted to let it go. Such a curious object. And on March 25th, it just reads, 20 years to prepare for its coming, I must share this sound with the world. I don't know what any of that means, but uh, can't be anything good. We done here? I'm fucking starving. Don't come looking for me again. I want nothing to do with you people or that thing. I'm out. Thank you so much for watching guys, that was Throttle. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry if you hear any rumbling in the background for this one, they're laying some pipe outside. Ayo! But seriously, I tried something new with this one, I put some more sound effects in there, put a backtrack to it. If you did like the music, it was all homemade, so you could download it in the link below. Uh, you know, I always like those graphic audio audiobooks, it's not a sponsorship, but do check them out if you do like audio dramas. Yeah, I hope it turned out pretty well. I'm going to work on it some more, try to get that feeling just right. Next week, we're going to have another story for you guys. I'm going to start posting more written stories on the website as well, so give that a look. In the plans, I do have a game in the works. It's going to be out on the website as well. It's going to be one of those point-and-click, choose-your-own-adventure type games. Uh, I have the foundations pretty much coded, uh, just finishing some stuff up. Later, I could probably turn them out a lot faster since the coding's already there and there's never a lack of ideas uh so yeah give us a check out let me know what you guys thought you know like and subscribe and all that stuff and see you guys later peace